Now I would like to welcome Takasha Winton and Dr. Andrea Willis from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. Ms. Winton is Senior Vice President and Chief Government Relations Officer for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. She leads the company's state and federal government relations efforts and oversees analysis of proposed legislation. She also serves as the Blue Cross liaison to federal and state industry associations and advocacy groups. Dr. Andrea Willis is Senior Vice President and Chief Medical Officer for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. Dr. Willis ensures that all of the company's clinical initiatives contribute to the overall health and well-being of the communities they serve. Under the leadership of J.D. Hickey, President and CEO, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is committed to a culture of diversity, um, and the company has stated that it stands in solidarity with uh, their partner communities, our members, and our business partners against racism, especially during these difficult times. A key part of this work is the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee Foundation's recent grant for research at Meharry Medical College's Center for the Study of Social Determinants of Health. The grant will fund research by the nation's largest private historically black academic health science center on barriers to health care, poor health outcomes, and vaccine hesitancy and at-risk communities. Um, Ms. Winton and Dr. Willis will discuss how they're solving these problems at the state level in Tennessee. Thank you so much for that introduction. And on behalf of our over 7,000 employees and the three and a half million members we serve, we want to say thank you to the Nickham staff and all of you for being here with us today. Um, oftentimes when we are having health policy discussions like the one we're having today, the last place people look to for an opinion is to their health insurer. Now, we hear all of the other things you say, insurance costs too much, it doesn't pay for anything, insurance companies always say no. Uh, and while we obviously disagree with that sentiment and love to share our viewpoints on the actual cost drivers of health care, that's a topic for another day. One thing that I think that we all can agree upon is that insurance companies have a great deal of data. And we have a great deal of data because we process a tremendous amount of healthcare claims. And through that data, we hope to offer a different perspective than what you would normally hear in these types of discussions. Thus, I am happy to introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Andrea Willis. She will share with you some of the things that we've learned at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee using the power of data emphasizing the clinical perspective, recognizing the historical context, and understanding that forming strategic partnerships driven by data can provide policymakers, clinicians, and individuals the tools that they need to change healthcare outcomes, particularly for people of color. Dr. Willis? Thank you so much, Dakasha, and thank you for the opportunity to talk about public health and specific Typically, what we view as a health plan's role in public health. I have been in private practice, worked in the public sector, and now in the private sector. I have learned great lessons from each experience, but perhaps the greatest lesson is that every sector must play a role in public health, and where those roles intersect around a human life should be singular in purpose and create a synergy so dynamic that we are all the better for it. One of my favorite quotes is from Dr. William Fagey, a former chief of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. He said in a speech to graduating medical students, there is something better than science, and that is science with a moral compass, science that contributes to social equity, science in the service of humanity. I think he was right, and I think this COVID pandemic well illustrates that we are in a place in time where we collaboratively need to make sure everyone benefits from the science realized through healthcare. This slide is just a snapshot of data that we as a health plan have within our reach. This was last year and before we saw the big peaks of COVID-19 infections. The point of this slide is that even though this is strictly claims-based information and it does not nearly show all of the public health picture, it is still a piece of the puzzle that gives an additional perspective. The more important point is even within this sliver of information, we see health disparities. 
These are things that we did as a company to address health disparities. I'll highlight just a few. We funded free COVID-19 testing for uninsured and underinsured communities. We financially supported increased broadband access in underserved areas. We have produced media for both flu vaccines and now COVID vaccines with intentional focus in minority communities. We have increased the number of scholarships we've awarded to minority students pursuing healthcare professions. Our foundation just last week issued a request for proposals for community grants to support grassroots efforts to promote COVID-19 vaccine acceptance. We do realize that we can't do it alone and that there is power when we, we meaning the public sector, the private sector, the provider community, trusted community partners, and policymakers work together. In 2020, we really had two pandemics. We had COVID-19 as well as the magnification of racial injustices. Those things together really exacerbate health disparities. The true heart of public health is making sure we take care of the most vulnerable. In doing so, we strengthen the entire system for all. And that's why we are honored to partner with Meharry Medical College to really try to advance the work around health disparities. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. So social determinants of health include differences in factors like socioeconomic status, education, neighborhood and physical environment, employment and social support networks, as well as access to health care that contribute to differences in health and health care. And I'll just say addressing social determinants of health is so important because it makes us examine those things that have happened historically and continue to happen that contribute to the lack of resources to protect health. Personal responsibility is certainly important in health, but the question becomes, what are the barriers in place that impede certain segments of the population from even having interactions with health care providers and from receiving culturally competent health education that can inform that personal responsibility? Last year, representatives from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee and Meharry Medical College would often find themselves in the same virtual meetings talking about how COVID-19 was disproportionately impacting minority communities. Meharry is the nation's largest private historically black academic health sciences center. They are well respected in their service to disparate populations. And while both Blue Cross of Tennessee and the Harry will continue our respective efforts on health disparities, we recognize that there was opportunity for exponential impact if we work together. Meharry brought leaders from several of their programmatic areas to the table. The joint collaboration focuses on the goals of examining COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy and the underlying reasons that contribute to it. So while this focus is on a right now problem, we believe it will have broader applicability to address health disparities and distrust of the healthcare system. So this slide is an illustration of the skepticism that exists around the COVID vaccine. It's taken from the Kaiser Family Foundation and it just echoes something you saw earlier. This snapshot shows that young people, then black adults, followed by Hispanic adults, have a wait and see posture when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine. This slide goes into a little more on how we will combine data with Meharry to build a more comprehensive picture. Data is so important because it is the common language that speaks to improvements and outcomes. It also objectively points where we've missed the mark and where there are opportunities. At Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, we utilize the Social Vulnerability Index to improve our outreach strategy to the communities being disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. Our collaboration with Meharry 
leverages that and builds upon it by further identifying high-risk communities by applying predictive modeling. It helps to prioritize those communities not only for the vaccine, but to build the supports needed to address the ongoing social determinants of health in those communities as well. Data certainly strengthens the talking points from bringing other stakeholders to the table, like policymakers and providers. It can be the report card we hold up to show how the healthcare system is doing, and it can help guide where we need to go. These are the dimensions of the Social Vulnerability Index. Scores are assigned based on factors such as safety, food insecurity, housing, health care access, and health literacy, among others. A higher score means more negative impact to health. Social vulnerability is not just a score, though. It refers to the ability of communities to be able to withstand external impacts to health. In other words, it evaluates how outside forces, such as disasters or disease outbreaks, further compounds the odds already stacked against these communities. If the totality of those odds are too high, it leaves very little opportunity for those communities to overcome the odds and even less opportunity for them to decisively win an already uneven fight. I'll wrap up by saying that we as an industry often talk about quality metrics that support the very ideal of better health. That is what the focus of healthcare should be in general, and it is absolutely what should be demanded for those that feel that the healthcare system has forgotten them. As we look back on 2020, I think the questions that we have to ask ourselves are, what have we learned? And what are we still learning that will make us better? And perhaps even more importantly, what are we committed to keep learning going forward? This crisis has called upon all of us to do our parts to weave together a better public health response. We need to invite non-traditional stakeholders to the healthcare table, like trusted community partners, if we really want to make a difference in this fight. The healthcare system has been moving towards value-based care that's based on quality measures and outcomes. My, re my hope is, is that the steps we take to address social determinants of health for disparate populations becomes embedded in those value-based metrics so that it becomes institutionalized. We are all a part of public health. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Willis um, and Ms. Winton for such a comprehensive picture of disparities and their impact on public health.